In the previous videos, we gave a description on how to find all the generators of a cyclic group uh, having one generator A, if we know one generator A. So let's recall that, uh, that way to find it. So you have one generator A, any generator of this group, cyclic group, will have the form A to the J, where this exponent J here has no common no common factors but one with n where n is the order of the element a now that j we can take it uh from the numbers one two through n minus one that's all we need so any generator will have this form with the gcd or the greatest common divisor between n and j n being the order of a is one so the idea for this uh uh, lecture is to go over some examples on how we're going to use this for some particular cases. So let's look at this group. Let's look at the group U54 with the binary operation is multiplication. And let me explain what these two things are. So what is U54? We mentioned this group uh, uh, several times uh, during this course and is this is all the numbers from 1 to n minus 1 with this is n. So from 1 to 53 in this case, that are relatively prime to 54, means that the common factors between the number and 54, the only common factor, positive common factor, would be 1. So that would be all the elements. Now if you go and compute what those elements are, so you're going to take the elements from this collection from 1 to 53, and you're going to select the ones that have no common factor with 54. If you do that, you're going to get this list uh, here. So this is going to be the list of all elements from 1 to 53 that have no common factors with 54. So 1, 5, 7, 11, and so on, all the ones that you see here. Okay. Now, the binary operation for this group is multiplication modulo 54. So that's how these groups uh that's the binary operation of the group, and the identity for this group is, of course, uh, 1. Now, we can check that this group is cyclic, and the way we check it is by finding one element whose powers gives me all the elements of U54. In this case, 5 will have that property. Now, that's not the only one with that property. We just need to find 1 to check that this is cyclic. Of course, this needs to be checked. How do you check it? Well, you start taking powers of 5 modulo 54 and as you start taking powers of this element 5, you will get all the elements of U54. So taking powers of 5 will give you all this list that is here and of course that is all modulo 54. Now if you count the number of elements that you have here, you will count 18 which is exactly the same as the order of the generator. The order of the generator of a group is always equal to the number of elements in that group. So in this case, the order of the generator will be 18. In our case, we call that n. n in the result that I just recall here at the beginning of this lecture, n is the order of the generator. As per this remark, then any generator of U54, so let me go back here, any generator of this U54 will have the form, the original generator, which is 5, to the J, where the greatest common divisor between J and 18, 18 is here N, will be 1. So now this J here will be selected from the numbers from 1 through 18. And you're going to select the ones that have no common factor with 18, or the only common factor is 1. If you do that, then you're going to get the number 1, 5, 7, 11, 13, and 17. Notice that, for example, the number 2 is not here. It is not there because if you plug in num the number 2 here, the GCD between 2 and 18 is not 1. So it's not going to give you uh, what you want for that to be a generator. So this exponents are going to be the ones that will give me the generators of, of this group. So let's actually calculate the generators in this case. For j equals to 1, so you always start the original generator to the j. j is here 1, 
So it's going to be 5. We already knew that 5 is a generator, so that's not a surprise there. The next exponent we're going to use is 5. So we're going to take the original generator to the J, in this case 5. And remember, all these computations have to be modulo 54. Uh, so you take the fifth power of 5, it gives me this number right here, and I always have to do modulo 54, or that is the remainder when you divide it by 54. Now, if you do this in some online calculator, you can just Google that, it will give you 47. The same thing would you do with the other ones. You're gonna do it for 7, 11, 13, 17, taking powers of the original generator, and I always do modulo 54 because that is the binary operation in the group here. So you do for the 7, you get this number, modulo 54, you get 41. Exactly the same thing for the 11 power, 5 to the 11, which give you this number, modulo 54 equals 54, which equals 39. Now, the computations that I'm doing here, the way I'm doing it, they are not the most efficient way. You can simplify this a little bit more but I'm not going to get into the details of how to simplify that. That is fast modular exponentiation, uh, something that I cover already in this channel. If you are interested in seeing something like that, just search in my channel for fast modular exponentiation. The same for the other ones, so you do it for 13, for 17, you get these big numbers. Again, this is not the most efficient way. You do modulo 54, you get 23, and so on for the other one, 17. So I'm marking here down in blue, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one as the generators of the group. You always remember have to do this modulo 54 because of the group. So the conclusion here of this all computation is that the generators of U54 with the binary operation I just mentioned are 5, 11, 23, 29, 41, 47. This here is exactly this list that we calculated uh, here earlier so that will that will be the generators of the group so we know that this group has six generators and these are all of them so no other element of the group will be a generator except for for these six that are here all right so that was one example now before i continue i want to i'm going to write down a remark because i don't want you to get the idea that all of these groups are all cyclic that's not true not all the groups UN are cyclic. Now UN, remember, are the elements here are all the elements that are relatively prime to N, and the binary operation is multiplication modulo N. Those are groups, but not all of them are cyclic. U54 is cyclic, but U20 is not cyclic. So you cannot apply the same, the same uh, idea here because U20 is not even cyclic to it. To begin, to begin with, so it doesn't make sense to ask about the generators of U20 because it doesn't have any. So some groups are not cyclic, so you cannot ask about the generators. All right, so let's look at another example. So this other example is a little bit more geometric. So let's look at this group, D8, with the binary operation that is concatenation of uh, symmetries of D8. Now remember, D8 is all the symmetries of the regular octagon. Uh, that group has 16 elements because always dn for any n will have 2n number of elements. The regular octagon is, is just the one that has eight sides, all of them are the same. And now these angles that are drawn here are just for reference. That group is not cyclic. But that's not the group I'm interested about finding the generators. Because it's not cyclic, it doesn't make sense to find the generators of that group. Now, that is not cyclic, but the collection of all the rotations of D8 is a cyclic subgroup of D8. So, the rotations here is when you start rotating this regular octagon counterclockwise. So, you do a rotation of 45, and then you do a rotation of 90, and so on. All those rotations will form a cyclic subgroup of D8. And that cyclic subgroup is actually regenerated by R45, the rotation of 45 degrees counterclockwise. And you can see why here from the picture. So you just rotate one time 45 degrees, and in another time that would be 90. And the third time is going to be 40, 
three times the 45 degrees and so on so it's going to be generated by r45 so you start taking powers of r45 you're going to get r0 which is the rotation of zero degrees so that means do nothing rotation of 45 rotation of 90 rotation of 135 degrees and so on so you're going to get all these elements these are all the rotations of that regular octagon and if you count how many we have here we have eight elements so that means that this element has order eight in that group in d8 so that's gonna be our end so i'm interested in the generators of this subgroup so we can still apply the result because the result applies to groups that are cyclic and any subgroup it is a particular group so i can apply it to this one so if we apply the result that we just saw then we can say that any generator of this group of subgroup will have the form the original generator r45 to the j where the greatest common divisor between that exponent j and n which is the order of the generator is equal to one again you do the same calculation you go through all the numbers from one to eight and select the ones that have no common factors with eight if you do that then you're gonna get the numbers one three five and seven now two and four and eight are not here because uh, the GCD between those numbers and 8 is not equal to 1. So you only select those that are equal to 1. So the generators of this particular subgroup will be taking the original generator, which is R45, and raising that generator to the power J when you take J to be any of these numbers. So J equals to 1, it will give me R45. That's not uh, news. But the other ones will be the generator so three five and seven so you take the third power of r45 that means you are doing a 45 rotation three times so that's 45 times three that's going to give you r135 and then you do a rotation of 45 degrees five times that's what this exponent here means remember this is concatenation of the symmetry so it's one after another is adding the the angles so that will give me r 225 which is 45 times 5 same thing happens with r 45 to the seventh power you get r 315 so these uh, elements are the ones that are the generators of that subgroup so what that means is that this subgroup has four generators and they are these ones right here the ones that we described earlier so that would be the end of the example that was a geometric example now i want to talk about uh this is going to be the last example i'm going to cover for this video lecture is the generator of zn with addition now this is a group we have seen before what is zn is all the numbers from 0 to n minus 1 or you can also think about as all the possible remainders when you divide by n so when you divide that by n the possible remainder will be 0 1 up to n minus 1 you cannot get remainder n because if you divide by n the remainder has to be strictly less than n and the addition here that's the binary operation the addition is addition modulo n so whenever you add you always take the modulo or just the remainder it's the same thing now that group zn is actually cyclic now if whenever you claim that something is cyclic you always have have to show what is the generator of that group in this case it's easy to find a generator for z and it's just the number one if you think about y just start adding one so one to the zero power will give me the identity in this case the identity is zero so it's going to be zero to so the first power will give me one to so the second power means one plus one is plus because the binary operation here is addition so if you start taking powers here then you're going to get all of these numbers of course and then that will prove that that is a generator we talked about this before and the order of the generator is the number of elements in that group there are n elements here in this group remember why because if you start counting here from one so it's one two up to n minus one so n minus one elements in this last part 
and minus 1 and there's one more 0 so n minus 1 plus another element that's n element so the order of 1 is n now by the res the result that we prove already any generator of this zn will have the form 1 to the j where the gcd between n and j is 1 n is the order of the generator and j is the exponent but what is 1 to the j Remember, the notation here, 1 to the j, means I'm going to operate the element 1 with itself j times using the binary operation. The binary operation here is addition. So, 1 to the j will give me j. If you keep the j small enough. So, that is that the conclusion of all of this will be that j is going to be a generator of zn if and only if the greatest common divisor between n and j is equal to 1. So that is an observation I wanted to make, in particular for this group, because then when you take powers, it just becomes, you can simplify like this, 1 to the j is just j, if j is less than, than n. All right, so it's easier just to do it this way. So let's look at a particular example. So let's say we want to find all the generators of z14 with this addition being modulo 14. Now, what is Z14? Are all the possible remainders when you divide by 14, so that will give me 0 up to 13. That would be all the possible remainders. Now, so the generators of Z14 will be from taken from these elements, from the elements of the group, of course, that are relatively prime to 14. Why relatively prime to 14? Because that's what this says here. Is it between n and j equals 1 is exactly the same as saying that n and j are relatively prime. So we're going to take the elements from 0 to 13 that are relatively prime to 14. So have no common factors with 14. Now 0 is not there because the GCD between 0 and 14 is 14. So that's not 1. 1 is there because the GCD between 1 and 14 is 1. And you keep going through this list and check the ones that have GCD with 14 equal to 1. Those numbers will be 1, 3, 5, 9, 11, and 13. So these will be all the generators of Z14. So in this case, then this group, Z14 with addition, will have uh, 6 generators. Now, because every group of the form CN with addition is cyclic, you can always apply this type of argument to find all the generators of groups that look like this. All right, so that is the last example I wanted to uh, talk about today. So that's how you apply the theorem to find the generators of a cyclic group. In the next lecture, we will talk about some two, uh, two important theorems that are still related to cyclic groups. So that's all I have to say for today. Take care and good luck.